So I hope you all can see my screen. As Tiffany said, I'm Frank Boden. I'm working the same team as Tiffany. And Tiffany asked me to speak about partner opportunities uh, for securing the OT and IoT uh, uh, networks with Azure Defender for IoT. Uh, my uh, agenda is um, I will cover the most um, common questions I have received from partners and also from customers since I'm working with this uh, solution for more than yeah, 10, 12 months now. And you know, this uh, solution was coming over from the uh, acquisition of CyberX and this became Azure Defender for IoT. And this is one of the first question I got on the name. Why do you call this product Azure Defender for IoT? There is a name IoT in when uh, the first focus we have seen is on OT. And uh, I normally respond, this has been a wise decision to come up with the name Azure Defender for IoT because it's not just the OT, it's not just the industrial control systems we want to cover. It's also in the mid long term and uh, there are other speakers who will speak a little bit about the future, about the roadmap, what is also currently in the in the preview. Uh, this will be one solution where we cover all the different aspects of IoT, OT and all this uh, different type of stuff. And there are a lot of uh, different names around um, the OT, IOT, maybe you have seen ICS or, or SCADA and everything and, and enterprise IOT. So a little bit, a lot of different terms are flying around and I like to group uh, these terms in two blocks. The first block and uh, you see some uh, special acronyms here, OT stands for Operational Technology, IIoT, Industrial IOT, ICS, Industrial Control Systems, the more uh, difficult term is SCADA, which stands for supervisory control and uh, data acquisition. They're all uh, in, in one block and you see some images here. It's about um, automation control systems, about robotics, industry production systems, uh, oil and gas or, or pipeline and uh, mining, uh, food and beverage, industrial uh, yeah, control systems for generating and tr trans uh, transmission um, energy. That is one one uh, block and it's also about safety here because when something goes wrong here, it can be have a, a big impact on the on, on, on damage on, 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 on safety on life and on the nature. The other big uh, part which will also be starting to cover here is the enterprise IoT or even consumer IoT, so the big IoT one. And of course, the boundaries between these two blocks are blurry uh, because you see also some elements here about sensors, um, thermostats, which will also be part, of course, in this uh, uh, left hand side block. And um, the other maybe distinction. Here in the enterprise IoT and consumer IoT, we are also already working with modern uh, protocols, mainly uh, I, uh, IT, uh, TCP IP protocols, whereas in the OT, uh, industrial IoT side, we are dealing with a lot of old legacy protocols. For example, in the Siemens environment, there is the protocol S7, which is uh, uh, familiar in, in this environment, Honeywell Bull protocol, general electric specific protocols, and a lot of this stuff that has been around for 25, 30 years already. So my main agenda uh, is covering these four questions. Question number one I often get, can I already make money with OT and IoT security? And, and also can I make money with reselling? Yes, no. And where are really my big business opportunities in working with, uh, with Microsoft? And how is Microsoft helping uh, you as a partner to become successful. These are my main four questions I uh, like to uh, answer during my uh, next 20 minutes where I go to some of the of the slides. So let's start with the first one. Can I already make money with OT IoT security? Of course you can because when you see this uh, results from a survey uh, that we have done last year in June or our um, our, our CyberX um, brick company which has now become um, Azure Defender for IoT, their main product. And you see there is a lot of white space uh, for security, a lot of vulnerabilities we can find in uh, the industrial, and you see the term ICS is used here in this control systems. So um, mainly old legacy systems that are still used that are not anymore normally under support. 
in um, recent blog checks uh, I have been with these partners, we found a lot of Windows XP systems. We found even a lot of Windows NT systems. Of course, you all know these systems are outdated. No security patches are normally available anymore. And, um, and even when patches are available in more modern system, more up-to-date systems, often the systems are not keeping up to date with uh, constant um, uh, life updates with uh, antivirus definitions and so on and so on. That is one big part. A lot of old systems that will not be touched anymore in any way. Uh, we have seen a lot of um, yeah, really weak password system or really work weak encryption because unencrypted password is almost you don't need to work with password when it's uh, really un un unencrypted anymore. And the other big part is uh, often these environments in the in the past have been completely isolated from the internet or from the IT environment. But because of the digital transformation, because of the uh, industry 4.0 motion, a lot of these isolated parts of an organization are now coming together. And, I think even COVID-19 has increased the, the connectivity because a lot of admins working from home have found ways to remotely um, administer all this environment. So the last one, the 27% uh, ICS sites have now been direct connection to the internet and uh, remote access even with um, 50, uh, 54%. Though so there are a lot of vulnerabilities available in these environments. That is our job to fix together with our partners and with our customers and to make them aware. I think most of you and, and me as well like uh, two special diagrams of Gartner. One is the magic quadrant and the other one is the hype cycle. So let's see where OT security is in the meantime. And this is a hype cycle chart from 2020. And you see OT security really is moving into the mainstream. So when we see this as a, as a snapshot of uh, June 2020, we are now 50 months ahead. I would say OT security in the, in the middle of this phase, slope of enlightenment, and um, uh, just behind endpoint detection response and SIEM. And this two technology, EDR and SIEM, uh, we will also cover today because um, in, in when we speak about enterprise IoT and also the integration in our Azure cloud world, a lot of this technology are coming closer together and will be integrated. So it's good to see we are moving into the mainstream, no big issue anymore. And you also see IoT security is a little bit behind. I think it's not so much because of the technology. It's also because there is more pressure on the OT technology side from the compliance and from the regulation. Because I said before, it's about safety. It can be life damaging when something goes wrong, when something somebody is deactivating a, a safety PLC or manipulating such a safety PLC. So there is much more pressure. And uh, this is critical infrastructure and a lot of government, a lot of authorities in the uh, in different countries have put pressure in, in forms of regulation on this. So there is more need to do something here. The other thing is about how big is the opportunity regarding numbers. This is a little bit older chart from uh, Gartner as well. And uh, you see Gartner here is using the term IIoT, industrial IoT. Here they are using uh, OT security. Here they are using IoT security. That's why I mentioned before there is a little bit mix of different terms. And you see gross um, uh, compound gross rate is about 30%. I would personally say it's even higher because in this part, the I IoT services part, uh, a big chunk of this is security as well. Because we have seen in the project I'm working with partners, a lot of partners position themselves as becoming an MSSP, a managed service provider for IoT and OT security as well. Besides what they are also doing with their legacy SOC in, in their IT environment. So this also comes together. And so I would say the security part, when, it, when we also consider the services part, is even higher there. So great opportunities from the number, from the target addressable number, and also where we are currently in the hype cycle. It's not anymore uh, immature technology we are speaking about. And um, I also like to highlight uh, some of the projects we have uh, successfully uh, deployed, implemented already. And you will see uh, we are active together with our partners in a lot of different segments. And um, I like also to highlight that Microsoft is also a big user internally with this uh, technology in all of our cloud uh, data centers, in all of our normal data centers, in a lot of our facilities where, which we are using. 
And um, I think Microsoft um, uh, makes a decision because of this product we, we know really well from CyberX and makes a decision uh, often to make a joke before the next renewal was due. We, we simply acquired CyberX and this became then an important part of our uh, Azure portfolio. Some other um, um, implementations and successful deployments we have done in the pharmaceutical uh, environment. You see monitoring more than 30,000 OT devices in a lot of sites worldwide with a lot of different protocols, Rockwell, Schneider, Siemens, S7, General Electric, ABB, Yokogama. These are the typical OT environments where you see this, um, this um, different vendors um, uh, involved here. Uh, big auto, auto parts manufacturing, again, about more than 30,000 devices. And I would say this is the typical a number in average of, of devices of projects we are doing about 30 to 40,000 devices. I'm involved currently in a lot of customers who start step by step slowly with just about 1,000, 2,000, up to 5,000 devices. Uh, just in May, we closed a big, big project in auto manufacturing environment as well in, Ger in, uh, in Germany and in, in Europe with a well famous brand. And this um, is a size of about more than 100,000 devices. So we closed this deal in, uh, with a partner in, uh, in, in uh, end of May, and now we are in the middle of the deployment with a lot of sites globally. And uh, this project is really, really uh, underway. And just that more than 100,000 devices over the next couple of uh, months will be uh, monitored and protected here. Um, another manufacturing and paper products, so a lot of paper products, logistic and this environment, even more case studies here. Um, uh, national EMEA transportation system operator. So it's about electricity, transportation. And here you see the term SCADA as well, which is often used in this uh, electricity smart grid environments. Um, and you also see there some substation part of the smart grid uh, or older electricity grids, more than 25 years old, what I, where I mentioned before, old legacy devices used here. Uh, top energy uh, utilities, again, 35,000 uh, uh, OT devices mentioned, uh, global oil field services, mining, electricity, these are the typical environments, manufacturing. So there are some more. I don't need to go through in all of the environments um, step by step. Uh, just to mention uh, global food manufacturer, uh, in Germany, I'm currently working in some of these projects because although this um, is part of a critical infrastructure, because when the food creation or beverage creation is, uh, is, is stopped or manipulated, this has been, uh, can have a big damage to the environment and to people as well. So keep this in mind, uh, important environment as well. On the other side, outside of, of uh, OT, how does it look in the enterprise customer segment? This is a nice chart uh, I found here and you see Traditional endpoints managed and um, yeah, could be managed endpoints relatively flat. Uh, what we see and manage endpoints because normally each employee in the market has either a desktop and or, uh, or and would say a smart uh, phone device, maybe a tablet, um, and um, some devices can be managed, could be could be managed or maybe not managed, and the major close rate here is in unmanaged devices. You see the, 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 the yellow, uh, sorry, the, the uh, red uh, part of this um, uh, bulk here are, are growing um, the fastest. And this can be, um, um, yeah, uh, have an impact regarding all the management um, and, and the aspect when these um, devices are misused for, uh, for botnets and so on. And so something needs to be, be done here as well. And this can be a lot of different uh, devices, uh, connected printers, connected diagnostic systems, connected sensors as well in an in, 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 in enterprise IoT environment. So this is also what we are uh, uh, currently addressing with our new version that is currently in, uh, in, in public preview. I think um, 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 Richard will mention it and Mark Simmons uh, later as well. So second question, can I make money with research? Of course you can, but uh, keep in mind, and this is a lesson I learned as well as I started uh, at Microsoft about 18 months ago, Microsoft has a so-called enterprise agreement with most of the enterprise customer in place. And the customers really like to purchase through their enterprise agreements. They do this normally uh, and with transaction via so-called LSPs, licensing solution partners. 
And, and, and so normally in this larger enterprise environment, our security partners focus more on the deployment, focus more on the professional side, on managed services side, less on just on the purely on purely reselling uh, licenses or or, or uh, Azure consumption um, uh, in this one. So. Uh, the reselling works really well and there is a special program not just for reselling it does, does a little bit more it's a so-called csp program it stands for cloud solution provider program this works well um, uh, in in the so-called smc environment small medium corporates or smb um, smaller medium business environments where these customers have no enterprise agreement in place and um, the um, partners who have such a CSP agreement can be direct or can be indirect, are then in charge of the complete life cycle, not just selling the license or reselling, they are uh, providing as well as the admin, doing the uh, support first, uh, second level support, for example, packaging this solution, and uh, this is on the next slide, with, with, with own solution, maybe with own hardware, and are responsible for the whole life cycle. This is what a lot of our partners are doing as well for this environment. And I also had um, um, the case um, a couple of months ago, where also an enterprise agreement customer want to purchase upfront and buy licenses for yeah, three years upfront. And so also the CSP agreement worked much better than um, the enterprise agreement. That is also possible what our partners can do here. So keep in mind the answer, can I resell licenses is yes, but please consider a lot of enterprise customers uh, like to work with an, an existing enterprise agreement. So where then is the most um, uh, interesting business opportunity for me as a partner? And uh, I like to come up with a simple chart here. I know my colleague um, Richard Diver has a much more in-depth slide on, on this one, uh, but for this just 30 minutes I have here in this call, I think that is uh, from an overview good enough. So I divided this in three sales, post sales, in the middle sell license or, or do the sales, also yeah, licenses in, 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 in OT security uh, is counted as, enterprise, uh, as, as Azure consumption revenue, so the, the term license is not 100% correct here. And, um, and I also like to start with Microsoft integrations because this uh, uh, opportunity with uh, OT security has been also really attractive for some of our ISV partners in the OT environment uh, because we see uh, more and more uh, movement now to try to integrate, and this is where I work with some of these, integrate our OT security inside existing OT devices. For, for example, switches that are running in this environment. And on the other side, also ISV can enrich our solution with own um, the developments they are doing. That's normally the way we are working with ISVs. And there is a MISA program just uh, focusing on the ISVs in, in this MISA split. So in pre-sales, um, a lot of partners doing pre-sales workshop, helping with advisory with consultants. And in a lot of projects, and I put also the including POX here, I work with our partners on POX. Um, and uh, I think this is an important step where personally I try to bring in partners as soon as possible in the sales cycle and running a POX with a partner. And I really like to have the partners in the, in the driving seat uh, doing the POX. Of course, we are not letting the partners alone. We're doing kickoff um, with the partners. We are doing uh, weekly reviews with the partner. We have uh, our technical support behind. Uh, but the earlier in my eyes, the partners are in, 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 in communication with, uh, uh, with, with our end customers in running POX and later on that's a good preparation for the architectural design, the final architectural design, the rollout and so on. I, I believe the better it is. And also I see a lot of partners, uh, especially managed service provider partner, uh, partners, who are working already with uh, Azure Defender for uh, uh, not just Azure Defender for IoT with our um, Azure Sentinel and building modern SOCs with it. It's a really easy step uh, to move into the IoT and OT management as well. And even I see partner peer-to-peer -peer motion because some partners like really to concentrate just on the managed service part and other partners are doing the technical deployment. So I have a lot of customer uh, a project at the moment where there are more partners involved, just not just one partner, but they are splitting the work either in the deployment and the rollout and other partners are focusing more on the managed service side. So a lot of opportunity uh, included here. The other thing 
um, where I often ask, yeah, I'm not coming directly from the OT um, uh, security side. Where's a good start for me? And, uh, and I see a lot of partners start with really upsell and cross sell their existing threat protection experience and their services. And what I said, a good start really is when uh, when our partners have a good understanding and, and good uh, customer base already in the Microsoft Defender and the threat protection side, either on the Microsoft 365 Defender, more to come in the uh, next uh, presentation when we speak about enterprise IoT, or also in the Azure Defender side, you see this OT IoT, meaning especially uh, Azure Defender uh, for IoT with a close combination of Azure Sentinel, with a close combination in Azure Defender, in Azure Security Center. So that's an easy upsell step. And uh, the only gap is that I see sometimes that um, the traditional partners are not so closely involved uh, in the, the OT environment because they are a little bit different people. Often their reporting lines are different. Uh, so maybe that's a process and a, a relationship step to overcome. But from the technology, both uh, things are um, more and more coming together. And they, we see a convergence of OT and IoT. And threat protection partners who are really skilled in this environment have a really good starting point already. And it's not just with this uh, Azure Defender for IoT. Azure Defender for IoT is one of the, of the products, one of the solution, our wide end-to-end -end security portfolio across Again, IT, OT, industrial IoT, name it, all the different names before. So the Azure Defender for IoT is auto discovery of assets, continuous monitoring, uh, vulnerability management in a non-intrusive, passive way, agentless. And you see on the right hand side, there are much more you can over time include and in your portfolio that you uh, target and, and address um, uh, with your end customers. So there is brownfield and uh, greenfield devices with Azure Sphere, end-to-end uh, -end security with agents with um, uh, trusted protection modules, chipsets, um, Azure IoT Hub, which is a communication bridge into the Azure Cloud, Azure IoT Edge. So a lot of components we have. You don't need just to stick with the Azure Defender for IoT. That's, in my eyes, one component you can easily start and with Azure Defender for IoT moving on-premise from IoT on-premise into the cloud and move there uh, wider and wider into the whole uh, IT, IoT, industrial IoT, name it, um, um, ecosystem of products um, Microsoft has built over the coming uh, years. So, how does Microsoft help uh, me to be uh, successful as a partner? We have a lot of different uh, programs. So I'm working in the same team as Tiffany, the um, uh, security partner development team, a global team. We provide such airlift training programs. I mentioned before, we are working with partners on proof of concepts. Uh, that's a lot of uh, stuff we are doing. Tiffany mentioned we are doing go to markets or we help to build solution, bring the solution into the Azure Marketplace, we do go to, we, we uh, help with go to markets. Uh, we help with sell with motions, um, bringing together your sellers with our sellers, um, working with Fox and so on. And there are a lot of also um, standard programs coming from our um, um, uh, OCP, um, um, now global partner system organizations or um, uh, uh, cloud um, uh, service provider uh, programs, the incentives. I like to mention other incentives here, for example, the ESIF, where we help partners in longer term POCs um, uh, to be financially supported and so on and so on. There are technical solution, area exp uh, expertise, training, certification programs. And I also mentioned briefly Azure incentives. Um, partners can become so-called uh, administration link partners. So we have something called partner admin link, where you as a partner can achieve special incentives on top of what you do already. Uh, which brings you extra financial benefits uh, in, in terms you are managing the environment, helps the customer with support, with uh, service, with administration, and so on and so on. There's a little bit more about the partner admin link. Also, multiple partners can can join the, as the same partner on a partner admin link. What I mentioned before, one partner is doing the deployment and the architectural design, and another partner is doing more of the um, um, the, the managed service part, everything is possible. Under this link, you see a little bit more how it works. 
Uh, maybe you from the technical side will not be so deeply involved in all this um, uh, partner operational stuff. Maybe you have partner alliance uh, uh, managers in your organization. They are maybe more closer working with us on, on this one. A little bit more resources in the background on this where you can get uh, some links. You will get the, um, uh, the PDF deck afterwards. Here you can dive a little bit in. And my really second last slide is uh, this one. Where I also uh, like to tell you, uh, since the last year I worked with the solution, we listen carefully to our partners, we listen carefully to our customers. And one thing uh, I often hear is about the pricing. For some of the partners, customer pricing works really well, especially in the in the mid-size environment, 30 to 40,000. Um, but I also have uh, some complaints about smaller uh, partners uh, they want to start with just 500 devices, uh, 100 devices, and so the increments we have right now with 1,000 maybe is not the best one. And of course, pricing, there is always discussion. I never heard pricing is uh, too low. And uh, what we are doing now and what we have announced to be even more competitive against our competitor, uh, competitors in some project, we are uh, coming up with a price reduction by 30% within the next uh, nine or 10 days or so. By the 1st of October, we are reducing our list price, which is currently $2 per device per month as a consumption revenue, as a consumption uh, um, uh, to um, $1.40, which is a 30% price decrease. There is even higher uh, discount possible in so-called field empowerment. Um, so you need to work with your sales rep, the Microsoft sales rep in your account, when there is special upfront commitment in larger amounts of devices. That can be really interesting, though there is a lot of more in. That is the first wave of price adjustments we are currently doing, and the second wave is coming later this year. So in the November, December timeframe about the increments, as I said, in the moment increments are about 1000. We are thinking to uh, lower the increments to a, a smaller number um, to be announced finally what it is. And this would bring benefits so smaller pa uh, partners can or a smaller customer can benefit from this. The other benefit would be in a POC that runs longer than 30 days because for a POC lo running longer than 30 days, normally partners, customers will, has, will be charged with um, the next incremental step, which currently thousand, so it would be more price attractive. And the same is when partners are building own demo environments and they just need to have a demo environments for 100, 200 or smaller device numbers, then can, can be attractive for partners as well. So that's why I said we, we listen to partners, customers, and this is the first price wave, uh, price reduction wave that is under, under plan. Uh, announced, uh, I think already internally, you will see some more in the uh, coming in the next days. A little bit more when you have time to read about blogs, webinars, blah, blah, blah. There's also a nice joint white paper that we are doing with one of our partners, PwC, and also some webinars. You are invited as well uh, to do something similar, what we are doing with this partner already. So reach out to Tiffany, reach out to me or to my other colleagues, more than happy to work with uh, you as well on such um, uh, documentation to become more visible. Uh, are, that's part of our work, what we're doing with partners. And with this, I think I stayed um, not that bad in time. I'd like to thank you for your attendance and listening. I did not check the chat because I had a full screen and just on my presentation, but uh, in case questions were coming up, I hope my colleagues Richard Diver, uh, Paul Kalimor were busy in the background in answering hopefully the questions. And with this, I pass back to Tiffany. Thank you so much for that session, Frank. That was amazing. I think you really highlighted the partner motions and some of the resources that we have available uh, for our partners here, as well as some of the opportunities um, and how we are working with partners to help our customers use IoTOT to secure and improve their environments.